there grade fives welcome to your natural science lesson today i hope you are all well and i hope you are raring to get learning so without further ado let's get cracking a reminder that this lesson is brought to you by worksheet cloud and if you have anything you would like to talk to us about or to tell me or any of your other subject teachers you can drop us a line at grade five at worksheetcloud.com we absolutely love hearing from you so what are we going to be learning today? Well, we have been looking at Earth and beyond as our topic um, over the last week and a bit. And we started by looking at the structure of the Earth and where the Earth is within our solar system. Our last lesson, we looked at tectonic plates and how the mo they move and cause lots of different things to happen, including earthquakes and volcanoes. Today, we are going to become geologists. That's right, geologists. Geology is the study of rocks. So geo comes from the word earth. And you may think of it if you think of the word something like uh, geography, the study of the earth. OK, so we're going to be doing geology. And what we're going to do, I put up here for you under aim. We are going to compare different types of rocks and we are going to be able to name the three different types of naturally occurring rocks that happen in our world. The vocabulary you're going to be exposed to in today's lesson I have listed for you. Molten rock, magma, igneous, metamorphic, sedimentary, compaction, erosion and weathering. So if you've got your scientific dictionary at hand, make sure you started to make those notes ready for when they pop up in our lesson. Because you know the most important thing to remember is Science rocks and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. I know that was a terrible teacher joke, but just don't tell anybody. OK, so let's do some basics. Rocks, very boring, right? They're all around us, but why do we even use them? So let's have a little look. There are many different kinds of rocks. So says my friend over here, uh, Rocky the Rock. <laughs> they are formed in very different ways. And here are some and let's see if you can recognize any of them. So have a little cl a close look at these images here and you might be able to tell me if any of them look familiar to you. Well, this one is sandstone, very common and very often used for lots of building work. Here we have granite or granite, depends on how you pronounce it, very strong rock. Then we have slate and lastly quartz. Many people um, have quartz around their houses because it's just a beautiful crystal. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some pictures, various images, and I would like you to see if you can spot the rocks and what they're being used for. So here is a picture of a country lane. Um, can you spot the rocks? Well, yes, of course, they're being used here in a stone wall. How about this picture? What is the rock? Well, it is the chalk in the cliffs here. This is from my home country, England. These are the White Cliffs of Dover and they are made of chalk. From my original home country to my adoptive home city. These are the granite peaks of uh, Cape Town, the Twelve Apostles. And here we have obviously a very tall mountain peak um, of those rocks. Those show very, very old rocks or you might just find some rocks on a sandy and a pebble beach. And here's something I don't particularly want to see up close in person, but an active volcano is obviously where molten rock reaches our surface of our earth. And we're going to learn a little bit more of that in this lesson. So as I said earlier, there are three naturally occurring rock types in our world. The first is igneous, funny name I know. The second sedimentary and the third metamorphic. So we are going to learn today about each of these three and how they are made. So let's start with the igneous rocks. There's my little friend again and now I made him a baby. So let's look at igneous. Igneous rocks are like the baby rocks. They are born fresh and new from mummy volcano. When liquid magma or molten rock reaches the surface of the volcano and, it, and the volcano erupts, 
This is then lava. When it comes out onto the surface, we call it lava. And once that cools, it hardens to form igneous rock. And hopefully you should know where that magma is coming from. It is coming from the Earth's mantle. Remember, just below the Earth's crust, the next lower down is the upper mantle. And it, we learn about that in our, in our lesson about the structure of the Earth. And it's where volcanoes form at plate boundaries. And that is where up comes this um, hot molten rock. Now, a good example of an igneous rock is granite. Very strong, very tough. And it has come and formed from the cooling of lava. And now we have sedimentary rock. Now this is quite a process to form sedimentary rock, so pay attention. So sedimentary rock starts underneath the sea. What happens is a process of weathering and erosion means that bits and bits of rock over time are broken up and broken down into sediments, little grains of rock and dirt and sand. And those eventually will end up in rivers and lakes and streams. Well, where do rivers all lead to? The sea. So those rivers transport those bits of rock, those sediment deposits, and drops them at the bottom of the ocean floor. So you can see here, this is a good picture of it. So this is obviously the ocean floor. And you can see here all the little tiny bits of sediment floating around in the water. Now, over time, those particles of sediment drop and settle on the ocean floor. And, of course, over more time, more and more layers of sediment pile up and press down on the layers underneath. And this is a process that we call compaction. So they're being squeezed and pushed together. And over many, many, many years, those layers, which actually are called strata, you don't need to know that, but it's, it's quite interesting, like stripes, and you can see a good um, example of the stripes in these two pictures. Those strata or layers are pushed together and all the water is pushed out from in between and they actually stick together and now form a new solid rock layer. And that is called sedimentary rock because it has been made from sediments. Now, metamorphic rock is the other type of rock. And metamorphic rocks are rocks that are heated and put under immense pressure. And they, that causes all the minerals that they contain to be changed chemically. Do you remember when we looked at chemical changes as, a rever uh, as opposed to the reversible physical changes? Well, this is a chemical change. So something in that rock, because of the heat and pressure, has been chemically altered. And also, the collisions of tectonic plates may also result in the formation of metamorphic rocks. So here I've got a picture to show you. So this illustration shows how igneous rock, remember, igneous rock is the one that comes out of the mummy volcano. It's called lava. Here is being heated and changed. And that heat and change, because it's being pushed from either, all sides here and is being heated under the earth, would, cons uh, would result in metamorphic rock. And here, this is the other way, this is sowing sedimentary rock from the seabed, being pushed down and pushed down. And as it gets pushed down, it gets heated and it is changed as it nears the magma. It doesn't actually go into the mantle, but as it nears the magma, it is changed and then forms metamorphic rock. So those are the three types of rock, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic and they each lead to each other um, with a process of weathering and erosion and compaction all mixed up in between and that then results in something we call the rock cycle so just like the water cycle which we've looked at before where you have water that evaporates and then conden uh, and then the condensation occurs in the formation of clouds and precipitation comes down and we have rain and then it, with the cycle starts again, the same thing is happening with rocks. You may look at a rock and think, well, nothing's ever going to change that. But of course it does. It just takes a lot longer. So let's start with our mummy volcano at the top. We have a volcanic eruption. Remember, we've got liquid magma coming up from the mantle of the earth and reaching the, and, uh, the eruption 
as it comes down the side of the volcano. It comes as lava. It cools and forms igneous rock. And over time, that igneous rock is changed. It is weathered by things like rain and people. We weather things if we break up a rock or we walk on it. Um, or you could have something where a plant seed falls in and breaks up a rock. Who's ever seen a little tiny flower or something cracking a rock? Um, yeah, you would have, you know, especially if you live near mountains like you do, like I do in Cape Town, you see that quite a bit. So that's weathering and erosion is the transportation of those sediments. So the uh, igneous rock is weathered and eroded into sediments and those sediments then get into streams and rivers, make their way out to sea, settle on the ocean floor and are layered and compacted. Remember that word compacted into sedimentary rock. And sedimentary rock is often, you'll often see it because you will see the layers in sedimentary rock. If you've ever seen those stripy rocks, it's usually sedimentary rock you found. And if you're looking for a good example of compaction in our everyday life, I always like to think of um, when you've got the ironing, okay? So yesterday I did the ironing for my house and I ironed my husband's shirts or t-shirts and I put one on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other. And I put them into his cupboard. Well, the bottom shirt, because of the weight and the fact that I'm layering one top on top of another, the bottom one will have very thick creases because it's been compacted, it's been squished down. Maybe if you've ever been so lucky enough to have gone on holiday and packed your suitcase, when you get to the other end of wherever you're arriving, you take out your clothes and the things at the bottom have gone really flat because they've been pressed down, they've been compacted by the weight of everything above them. So that's sedimentary rock. Right, so the sedimentary rock over time is pushed further and further down uh, the Earth's crust and closer to the mantle of the Earth where it's a course a lot hotter it will then be put under a lot of heat and pressure and changed into metamorphic rock because it's been chemically changed eventually that metamorphic rock will get pushed down even further until it becomes back part of the mantle of the earth and we now have a molten rock called magma to start the cycle all over again and there you have it that is the rock cycle so the three types of rocks being igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic and the processes that they undergo to change them from one to the other being cooling, weathering and erosion, compaction, heating and pressure and then obviously melting to get back to a molten rock and so on and so forth. So I hope you've enjoyed and learnt a lot about rocks and hopefully you don't think of them as very boring things anymore. That's if you ever did, but what you might be able to do next time you're out and about, or you're driving around, or even if you can go to one of those places like the Scratch Patch and go and have a little look at rocks, you can have a little look and decide and see if you can classify something as igneous, sedimentary or metamorphic. What we are going to do in our next lesson is look at sedimentary rock in a little bit more detail and look at how and why it's so important in South Africa. So thank you for being with me today. I hope you have enjoyed your lesson and your learning and I shall see you soon. Bye grade fives.